Okay, guys, so due to microphone issues, I've changed my mic for this uh, video. But in this one, we're going to create our presenter. So we're going to go into our MVP class. We're going to create a home presenter. And it's not going to have any kind of super class and everything's fine. So let's click OK. And we have our presenter. So our presenter is going to be our sort of Oryx Java workhouse. It's going to do the connecting of the views observables to the data observables, if they need to be observables, and it's going to join all that work together. So the first thing we're going to need is our view reference. So we're going to go down, we're going to type in home activity, uh, sorry, main activity view. I'm going to actually rename that class to uh, home view. Uh, do a factor. Okay, and we're going to make this final, private, and final. And then we can just add our constructor parameter as before. So now we've got our view. Now the problem is Android has this concept of the life cycle. So our presenter will be responding to the life cycle, okay? So in order for this to work, we need to add our own create method. Public void on create. And that's fine. We're also going to need a callback for when the view is destroyed. So we're going to put in our on destroy. Now, how do we inform the presenter of the life cycle? Well, we're going to go back to our activity. We're going to add another inject annotation and we're going to say home presenter. And then in our presenter, we'll manually call presenter.onCreate or in our activity and on destroy, presenter on destroy. And there's our presenter essentially. Set up, hooked up to our activity. Great stuff. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to connect our button, our simple little button, to our presenter, and we're going to have it observe the changes through an observable. And then when that button is clicked, we're going to tell the view to put a toast up. So the first thing we're going to need is a method in our view a public method for the presenter to call, call show message, okay? And we'll put a string here, okay? A message. Then we're going to just do a very basic thing. We're going to just use a toast, dot make text, get context, message, length short, dot show. Okay. So this is where we're going to start using Oryx Java a little bit. So up here for Oryx Java, we need to add our subscriptions into a composite subscription so that when the activity is destroyed, we can uh, shut down all our asynchronous work. This is very important if you've got like network or data calls or database access happening because you don't want any background operation of any kind continuing when the activity is closed. If you leave a thread running and it references back to the activity, well, it's going to be null because the object was destroyed. All the views have been shut down. Either that or you're going to hold references to context and you're going to memory leak. So we're going to create our private final uh, composite subscription. Okay, it equals new. And I know you can hear my keyboard, by the way, and you're just going to have to deal with it. So there's our composite subscription. So we're going to actually add a private method in here. Okay, I like doing it with private methods, which return a subscription. And we're going to say um, your observe uh, button, observe uh, lookup button. And here we're going to say return view dot observe button. Now, unfortunately, this method doesn't actually uh, exist at the moment, this observe button method. So let's create it. So basically, uh, we don't want a subscription, actually. We want an observable with a uh, generic type to null or void. So this is where the Oryx Java part is in, comes in. If you don't know Oryx Java, you'll need to look that up first. So this is the button we want to observe. And because we're using Oryx binding, 
the Oryx binding library I showed that in the very first episode we have the ability to say Oryx view dot clicks uh, username lookup and that should be a button at the end so I'll just put btn on it do refactor so now we've got our clicks so anytime a button is clicked this observable will send around next event into our presenter which is where we subscribe and then we're going to have our uh, click event which is just actually a null it's a, it's a void and that is our code that's going to get called so we're going to say view dot uh, set message lookup button clicked okay so that's all ready to go now one thing about this lambda thing is you'll notice the click event here we don't actually care about the click event okay so I'm just going to put in two underscores and in Java, if your Lambda parameters, you can represent your parameters by two underscores, which means I don't actually care about those parameters. The last thing we need to do is to add this to our composite subscription and to set up that. So this will obviously do nothing. So what I need to do is I need to say composite subscription dot add observe lookup button and then composite subscription dot clear. So that means the button will be the observable will be unregistered when the destroy is called now in this case that doesn't matter because when the destroy is called the button's already gone and this none of this is no background operations here we're not holding a reference beyond the life cycle of the actual objects but we need to clear it so let's click run and i'm going to bring up the phone screen here oh i've got an error oh we never set up our module in dagger so as you say public uh, home presenter home presenter and then we're going to say uh, we're going to pass our home view and uh, new home presenter home view and we're going to say our we're going to copy paste our scopes and our provides method our provides annotation and then we're going to run it Oops, Daisy. It's amazing how often you forget to do that. And the great thing is, Dagger tells you because it's controlled. So let's switch over. So we should switch over now. So we can see our view. Hey, if you click lookup user. Hmm, something's not right. And I'm not entirely sure. So, we're going to have to do a bit of debugging. So I've attached a debugger. And we'll see what happens. Okay, was there any errors? What the hell is going on? That's really strange. Maybe it didn't run. What the juice? Ah! Okay, we're going to run it with the debugger, see what happens. Okay, so it is going in there. It is calling the clicks method. But nothing is happening. Hmm. Right, get back to you on this. Okay, so I managed to figure out the problem. It was an incredibly stupid issue with Dagger. But yeah, I've come across this before a few times. Okay, so in Dagger, uh, as you know, you scope something to maintain there's only one instance of it. However, what was happening here was uh, my home view was, this was required in two places, okay? The main activity requires a home view and so does the home presenter. They were getting two different instances of the home view. Now, why did that happen? We have our annotation. Well, if we go into our annotation definition, we didn't put the at scope. That's all it was. And now it will work. So let's see what happens. Oh, 
And as you can see, look up button, click comes true, it's perfectly fine. So that's it for the basics of the presenter in this video. Uh, next video we will talk about getting an actual network request to happen and building out our model.